Well, that last video had something wrong with the end of it, so it cut off a little bit prematurely. So I'm hoping that um, I'm not going to leave something out that got cut off, and there's a possibility I might be repeating a few things, which I do anyway, so that might not seem like anything different. Anyhow, so I did notice that we got to the part where we did stick the um, leaves onto our flower here, onto the stem art. Now, again, that's completely optional. The bottom leaves. Sorry. <laughs> this one got mushed. Okay. So, now, though, let's talk about that foliage in general. The way I like to do it is to have them kind of free-floating. And I did see that I showed a little bit of that at the end. So, things that look like this, you know. And so, this here is um, five. Where'd the other one go? Oh, here it is. I was like, nope. Oh. Oh. So I actually made a lot just for that picture I took that I showed you guys. Um, and probably more than you need. Of So I think I have like 12 all together or something like that. You know, I just got huge bunches, bunches and bunches and bunches. I know we're under this little camera situation. I got to figure that out a little bit better. Now notice, again, so we do them by threes because that's how the peonies come. Sometimes the three... Um, like prongs of it, three pieces are actually welded together. But if you just put them like this, that's a good sort of imitation or good sort of uh, good enough look for it. It gets that whole peony idea. These got squished. So I did them in different sizes. Now, I did a lot. So I would say that maybe, I don't know, I did like 12. Let's see what six looks like. You know, you can do them until you feel like you have enough. This is what a bunch of six looks like. I would at least do six, which would be 18, because that would be three leaves. So I'd at least do six. I might even do more and do 12, and it, depending on how much fluff you want there. But let's say we're at least going to do six individual three-pronged leaves, like this. So... Um, now these are big enough that we're gonna have to lace them. And also notice how I kind of mixed things up. Like I have some younger leaves that are smaller and it, those in the lighter green. Um, I have some darker green, I have bigger ones. So I'm going to show you like a small, medium and large size. You can, again, you can start with the base model and adapt from there. Um, however you're going to do it. So we'll do like a small, medium, and large, and then you could do two of each, or you can just start with a base model and do your own thing. Notice on this one, I actually even mixed it up and did um, did one of the darker khakis mixed together here. So, you know, there's a few different ways you can do them. These are smaller ones. So let's start with sort of a, I don't know, let's do like a medium. Let's do like a medium size leaf. So again, Tons of different sizes, and, and you can do the three together. You want it to be kind of pretty much similar sizes. This would be sort of a large one here, right? That's a larger size, right? And then we have those smaller ones. These are clearly smaller in that darker khaki. So you can't really go wrong with these, you know? So I'm going to give you like a general proportion that works, and then you can take out a row or two. Staying with 11 or 13 rows, 13 rows in general, 11 if you're going small, Remember, 11 row is what we stuck on to the stem. So we're going to be doing the same thing here where we do that um, pointy thing. And uh, let's make one. I'm going to do them in the darker here, this guy here. Scoot you over. I almost dumped those, didn't I? Um, I'm going to do this in the Toho Olivine 940B. I don't know. Don't hold me to it. Which is preloaded onto my ever so not so fancy paddle wire okay so i you know about an inch and a quarter or something like that that's actually the large one so maybe like an inch ish so what i i do is like i actually put down 24 beads for the large one so then i was doing about 18 beads um but let's see what an inch is again these you want some variety in size right you want to have the variety in size this i believe though is a 24 bead this is one of the larger ones um 24 bead so let's see, what do we get here? So this is 5, 10, 15, 19. Kind of what I was planning, 18 or 19. And I'm going to leave this out because I'm going to do that way that I like to do the extender beads, which is to pick them up as I go. After I do the first one. 
Okay, let's get the glasses in play here. Now I know that this is 19. That's my medium. So I don't really, you know, I'm just going to fluctuate around by bead count, not by length anymore. So let's squish that up a little bit. Get this guy out of the way. And we're going to do our thing. Give us about four inches there again. Is that about four? This is about actually closer to three and a quarter. I was like, that doesn't look like four. And pull down the bottom. You know, just give yourself, we're going to reduce to two. So, and then let's get some bottom twist going. You know, about three quarter, about an inch for this is probably safe. Um, for sure safe at an inch. So I'm get my little basic frame going. Come on up here. Okay, let's get these straight. So you've already seen me make these, but let's do the fun with extender beads. Hopefully that part where I showed you the chrysanthemums with the extreme extender beads was part of the other one. I have to... I never rewatched the videos, so... I can only hope that they're comprehensible. Um, okay. So, again, I'm, I want a rounded bottom, so I kind of, like, take my fingernail and make that rounded bottom and then straighten out my wire. Because, again, getting that initial, the initial first pass, the initial, like, three rows, the, like, one pass around, that's, you want that to be really, um, you want that to be really nicely done. Let's just put it that way. Because it is a ripple effect. Literally, I mean, we're building out in ripples. So if this is loose in the beginning, it's just gonna get, it's just gonna amplify it later on. So we wanna keep the, the make sure the middle one is just how we want it. So pushing that bead, there we go. And so gonna cut off about one bead and we're going tight again because we're gonna bend these. Notice how this one's already bent, tipped down like that. So any tightness will get taken care of. Now, I'm again, we're hitting it at an angle and just work the wire. You can always bend it back. You know, you're going to fold down at an angle. Okay, so the important thing with pointed tops, again, is that you get that fold down here, right? Get that fold right there. And then that when we get the beads loaded in, we push it down. See, I'm always holding this when I'm moving around so that it stays. So I don't notice that I'm doing it anymore. So I'm pushing those beads down. They're like clicking into that V right at the very top there, right? And then smoothing out the side with my fingernail. And then getting it right flush against there, cutting it slightly short, and doing a hard wrap around the bottom. Okay, so that gets really locked in there. So there's my center now. I'm happy with it. Things are straight. You know, kind of you kind of want to keep your wires straight as you go. Don't get I mean like look at that. That's because I use it as a handle. That's okay. Just don't care about what's happening there. Now I'm gonna untwist this. And you can choose to do your extender beads how you want to. Um, I showed you kind of the difference before. Like this big guy here is a one, two, two, one, two, whatever, you know. I basically, for these, I don't want them to be super pointy. So I'm going between ones and twos for every row. So just do them randomly. Don't even think about what you're doing. Um, so I'm going to pick up, I don't know, one on this guy. Okay, so I just picked up one bead. You could do all twos. You could do all ones. That's going to be very stout, though, but you could. You know, again, it's it's trying to show some variation. So one or two beads, pick it up, cut it off, one bead past. And again, over, like, underestimate or under, like, round down, not round up. If it looks like it's a half a bead past, then don't go one and a half bead past. Just cut it off at the half. It doesn't have to be a full bead, basically. So again, I'm checking, doing my smoothing, and then bringing this around, cutting it a little bit short again so it's a little bit tight. Now we're gonna do 13 rows here. So this thing might get, and we're gonna lace these things. 13 rows is definitely a lacer, especially since we're gonna be doing a lot of like, as you'll notice, I know I should stay on target. It just doesn't work for me. Um, that we That there's a lot of bending and shifting and, you know, the lacing keeps everything under control as we do that. So that you have that freedom to really shape them and just do fun things with them. Can we want them to look like they're just flopping around like you, you just pulled them out of your peony garden in the backyard. Wouldn't it be lovely to have a peony garden? I know someone who has a peony garden. She sends me some nice pictures of them and I am very jealous. I have peony envy. Ooh, that's a loaded term, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but I meant it innocently. Um, okay, so I'm going to do... 
two here. I love peonies. I would love to be able to have, I just have the anti-green thumb, which is one of the reasons I started because I love flowers. But I'm not very good at keeping live ones alive. Um, so that's one of the reasons I started making these, to be honest, was because as everyone says when they say, can't kill those, that's one of the most common things when people see them out and about in the world, right? Can't kill those flowers. A second only to the, the all-time question, right? I'm sure you all get this. How long did that take? I'm like, oh, God. And I'm not trying to be, like, coy, but I'm like, you know, if I measured the hours in that arrangement, I would might cry, except that I love making them, so it's okay. But, you know, so I'm like, I don't know how many hours does it. it a lot. Let's just say a lot. But that is by far the most, so that's a little loose there, so I'm going to cut one off. That's by far the most common question, right? How many hours? How long did that take? I shouldn't say like that. I'm not mocking people. I would probably ask that too. But it's just, you get, I, you know, I don't have a very good answer and I don't want to have a good answer because again, a lot. The answer is a lot. Plus I'm not the fastest at it. Despite what the pause button might have you believe in. Okay, so when I did another two beads, I pulled those up. So let's go a little faster here. Um, I could do time lapse, but I don't trust this new app. So I'm just going to kind of go fast here. I just want to get one done for you guys completely. Now again, notice how I'm holding the top. You start to get these unconscious like movements, right? Where you're, you know, where you hold everything in place. And, you know, and again, these movements are great. Except when you're trying to film something and explain something under a camera. In which case, then they're somewhat counterproductive um okay so let's get going here we're gonna do another quick wrap we're at nine right now i need two more complete wrap arounds i don't know i'm gonna pick up one this time I'm just keeping it just keeping it spicy you know going from ones to twos does it make a huge change nah probably not you know Again, some of these details are not like things you actually see, like the difference in the olivines and stuff, but they're there. They add dimension to the arrangement. Um, even if you don't notice them consciously, they truly do. There's something very different, right? About, you can see when people make flowers and you see that there's like sort of just sort of a, that sort of uh, dimension to it. I know we have a lot in our group who do that, where they kind of mess with colors in that way, and I love it. Okay, so something you can always, you know, keep in mind. You know, shape can add dimension. I always use that word, dimension, dimension. You know, shape can add that when you shape things. The colors, if you mess with the colors a little bit, that can add it. Okay, so where are we at? What do we do? We got 11 right now. <laughs> I have to keep counting. I'll do a double on the end there, doing a two bead. So again, for me, it's a lot easier just to pick up as I go, as opposed to having that knotted reserve up there. I do miss having my handle up top, but it's okay. I like to have that knot up top. Now, remember, anything, it's going to look sloppy until you lace it. So just kind of hold it and test that this is like the right amount. And if anything, err on going shorter because, again, when you fold it down, when you start like messing with it and bending things around, um, it's a lot easier to work with it if it's tighter than looser. Okay, again, see how I'm holding this here, which again is not the greatest for showing. Clicking that back in there, straighten this out, push down, wrap it around my wrist so it doesn't move. I've got about like 10 feet of beaded wire. Okay, probably more actually. And right about there. And I always kind of check. Yeah, that's pretty tight. That's good. Okay, so nice tight wrap. I do a couple of wraps right at the bottom before I start going down the wire. Just to really lock it in there. We really want it to be, you know, I don't know, stiff and, and ready to go. We want it to like kind of keep its position. Okay. I don't know what I'm saying right now because I'm concentrating on two things. I do not work from a script. I don't know if anyone else does. They probably don't either, but uh, <laughs> it's probably a little more noticeable that I am not working from a script here. Okay, cut a little bit so we have uneven. Cut about a quarter of an inch. Slightly more than a quarter of an inch. Where's my little desk garbage can? I use this little thing. Keep it here so I don't have to always put 
because right now there's actually something resting on the garbage can. So I keep a little side thing, you know, for your little end bits of your wire. You know, that way it's easier than having to throw everything away. Okay, tucking that down and pulling out the bottom, tamping this down slightly. Again, optional doing that. I just like it again because it keeps it nice along my stem wire. Okay, so there's sort of a medium, medium large-ish, you know, we're going to just rotate around this size. So, you know, it's not, so we're going to push this bottom one out, right? So we push the top out in the middle thing. That gives us a nice arch, a nice smoother shape on the top, right? If you push those right there, push that bottom bead with your fingernail, push it up and out, take the top bead up here, push that up, and then you'll get a nice little arch here, right? So the thing with these extender beads um, they're not that pretty underneath, right? You can kind of see them. They stick there. Eh, it's not that big a deal. And you don't even really see them up here as much as they're kind of like a shadow. So when you look at them, it's not just space there. So they totally do their job. Like that's, I'm, I'm a believer on the extender bees now in case you hadn't gathered since I've been saying it 8,000 times. So I imagine you've gathered. So, okay. So now we kind of shape it. I do a little zhuzhin like this. Do this little maneuver when you hold a petal or a leaf. If it's a long one, if you kind of hold it at the top, like a little bit past your where the middle basic frame wire ends and right at the bottom on the coiled part, and you just kind of hold it like this and do a little zhuzh like that, that'll get your rows a little bit more lined up and looking nice. Do a little zhuzhin. See, and then we get them kind of just all lined up there. We're going to lace this puppy because we're going to lace it. Now, a lot of times I, I, I lace... Um, the dark greens with a 32 gauge black but that's really hard to see on here too and then I um did do it earlier on the video part that got messed up and I was like well it's easier for you to see it with my stainless wire handy dandy 34 gauge master wire the wire that I literally don't think I've ever broken I don't think I've ever broken it I think the only time it's ever snapped on me is one time I had to like unwrap a flower like three times to make a video because I kept messing up the video um and I don't blame the wire for that one I don't blame me for that one. I blame circumstances for that one. Okay, that's a lot of extra wire. But again, this stuff is fairly cheap. I feel like they should start paying me for how much I, um, you know, how much I talk about it. But this stuff is, you know, it, it's it's worth its weight. It's incredibly light, so uh, it's worth more than its weight. So, okay, I did a long piece because I don't know why. That was longer than I normally do. So you're going to go, and I want the lacing to be on the inside, right? This is kind of your standard situation. We don't have to worry about. We want all of the, like, the bits that we don't want to see to be on the underneath. The lacing, nothing's reversed wrapped, nothing fancy. So poke it both through. We all know how to lace at this point, but just for fun. That is way too much wire. I have, must not have seen the end. So again, you pull it through lightly so that it's still... Let me actually... Might be better if I do it on top of one of my bin lids here at this stage. So, because you can see it a little bit better. So, as you can see, it's like poking through here. So, I'm not doing it very tight until I get it right about above the bead I want. And here we're going to go about halfway. It doesn't really matter. Halfway. When I say halfway, I mean on the base, on the initial basic frame wire. Not on halfway of the whole thing. On the initial basic frame wire, about halfway. Once I figure out where I want that to be, I pull it through so it locks in. And then I flip it over, do one crisscross. And then, again, lock it in, tighten it up. And then I would normally take the side I'm not using and lightly wrap it around this just to get out of my way. Very lightly, otherwise you're going to have to spend time undoing it. And then we're off to the races, right? Good thing this thing has a pause feature. Pull it through again. I put my thumb here so that it doesn't like, uh, like kind of bend on itself. I put my thumb gently here. And then I just realized that I didn't put it right through. I'm not used to doing it on this peach thing. It's actually kind of messing up my vision here. Okay, through the next row over. There we go. Okay, that's why we don't lock anything in. You don't pull it tight until you get it right over the bead that's right next to it because we're doing a straight one, not a diagonal lacing so right when we get there then i flip it over and then i pull it tight holding again holding this tight so i'm keeping my beads my rows sort of in line then poke it back through this background is really messing up my vision situation so hopefully you guys can see i'm about to pause it anyway 
Um, okay, so then we pull this through and then I'm going through the next one, one over on the outer side of the next row, pushing it through, pulling it all the way through almost, getting it lined up on the bead I want it to go to. It's gently pulling. And then each time, by the way, that I'm pulling a lacing through, I'm also sort of, so again, pulling it gently. Hang on one second and I'll explain what I'm doing. Flip it over. I'm also kind of pulling it all the way out to keep the end, the end kind of pointy. This one's far too long. It's almost more annoying that it's so long. I would probably cut it off, except that I probably will when I pause this. So we're just lacing through. <laughs> and then sometimes it curls on itself and makes a little like loop-de-loo. And you can either... So you see that it made a little teeny, you can probably barely see it, a little teeny loop right there. And the way to get out of that is to back it up. Don't try to undo it like per se, and then kind of flip the wire back around, right? You kind of want to finesse getting that loop out when it twists on itself. Because otherwise it will just be more annoying. Okay, so I'm just going to get to the end of this row and start the other one get these through and again sometimes too long wire can be more annoying because every time I'm pulling through I'm trying to get that straight I'm putting a thumb there so you keep everything sort of in line start to, you'll, the hands will start to hopefully do things that kind of maintain your situation as you go right we want to kind of keep everything in check as we go so now we get to the edge again and pulling tight Pulling tight, and I'm gonna on the edges we wrap around twice just to really again lock it in there. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it around, pull it around. I mean, for 34 gauge wire, this is stuff is kind of a dream. Now, sometimes I leave it going, but and then cut it off together at the end, personal preference. Then it gets a little messy. Okay, so now I can I did this lightly in theory, so I can just undo this guy. I chop off a little end because that's just way too much to be messing with. And now I'm going the other direction. So I'm going to flip this over. So now that the tip of the leaf is going up to the top. Leave, leaf. And again to the outer side. Now, let's pull this together. I do love these greens. They're just, I just love the olivines. They just remind me of that like back east green. That I mean, we have beautiful redwoods, and we have all kinds of beautiful colors in California, but I spent half my childhood in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and there's no green anywhere in California like Bucks County green. And I'm sure a lot of places back east have that green. I spent some time as an adult when I was in graduate school living in Boston, which also Massachusetts has some good green, but I'll be honest, not as good as Bucks County. Green there was like liquid, right? sure some of you might be living out that way and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I do miss that green. Right on the edge of the Delaware River there. One of those times like in the 70s growing up when your parents would put you out, me and my cousin, they'd put us out, we were about the same age, put us out in the middle of the morning and didn't expect to see us until dinner. We'd just be running around our grandparents' woods <laughs> like little feral children. You know, you get stinging nettle. And then you go get jewelry, you go get milkweed to like take care of it. You never have to go back to the house. We used to call it cow itch also. Yes, we're talking about greens. It's a very powerful color working with this. I think we had poison ivy so many times that I don't remember actually having it anymore at a certain point. You just get immune to it. <laughs> but. You know, now we were like probably eight or nine. Nowadays, it probably wouldn't let your eight or nine year old kids run free for, for the majority of the day. But we survived. <laughs> A couple of leeches, you know, some stinging nettles, but we survived. <laughs> Anyhow, I miss that green. I miss that that dripping green. You know, that deep green that you get. Um, so, and lightning bugs. Hmm. Don't really see those. So anyhow, there we go. I laced the whole thing while chatting at you. Hmm. Um, definitely, if you want a cut and dry how to bead video, then I am not the person for you. So have fun and travel onward. <laughs> so anyhow, 
So we got this guy, and I'm I'm pretty feeling pretty good about this one. It's a pretty good size. So that would probably be a medium largish one. And again, you can go down. So this was what did we do? We did a I think we did 19 beads, so about an inch. 19 beads, 13 rows. Um, laced it. We did some extender beads, round bottom, ultra pointed top, complete with extendo beads. And so, you know, and I did those in one, two, two, one, two, which again, just mess with it. You know, this one, what's this one? I don't know. Um, one, two, two. Oh my gosh, is it the same? That would be kind of coincidental. Um, okay. Now this one, I think I did a slightly longer middle line here. So this one is, yeah, for sure. This one is about an inch and three eighths. So this is a larger one. Right, so you can see that, and and you can mix up some larger ones and smaller ones on the same threesome, right, on the same trio that you're putting together. So, and you can even go smaller, right? We can use, you know, we can. I did a few here, right? So this one, let's see what these are, because I of course did not organize them in any way, shape, or form. This one's an inch and an eighth. Well, it's closer to an inch, so I can. Put that together with the one I just did, which would be lovely if I knew where I put it. That's about an inch. So these two are about the same-ish size. And again, we're not going for the exact same size. What's this one? This one's about an inch, too. So I'd put these three together. And, you know, and again, they don't have to be the exact same size. There's really... But that's a good base model. And if you don't like... Um, if you feel like kind of unsure with having to figure out on your own, then just do them all this size. That's a, it's a good size. And then maybe, so do some that are um, 19 beads and then do the same thing, but do a 24 bead. You know, like this guy is probably a 24 bead. And what's going on with this guy? I don't know. The ones I made earlier. Um, so this one's probably, yeah, that's about an inch and three eighths. So these would be kind of the bigger ones. So this would be kind of a medium. And then go down to maybe like a 17, I don't know, 16. Uh, I even have some that are only 11 rows if I want to do smaller ones, but you don't have to. So any of this type shape is fine. And again, if you're feeling insecure about it, then just do, you know, if we're going to do like six of them, then do three that are, you know, 19 beads or 18 beads even. And then do like three that are 24 beads. Oh, I guess that doesn't, you know, I guess that adds up. Or add in even a smaller one, you know. So I'm going to put these guys together. I'm going to lightly kind of link them up. I don't want to mess with them too much because then it kinks up the wire. I'm going to lightly, very lightly group them together so that I don't forget next time. So these three guys are together. And so these, again, what do we do about with these? They're about one and three eighths. I thought I did 24 beads. Let's count real fast because I, I don't know. Can't count without a pointer at this stage. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, about 24 beads. Okay. So, you can do another one of those. So, you get the basic gist. I'm going to... um. Oh, maybe we should pause this one, actually, and do the actual assembly. So, there's our leaves. Um, I'm going to have... A, so, this was 19, but maybe just do an 18 with 13 rows, extender beads, 24. And then you can even do a few smaller ones. Do I have any small guys in here? I did one that I actually like this shape, but it's only uh, 11 rows, right? And it's about 24 beads actually here, um, but 11 rows, so it's a lot smaller. But it's kind of a nice small variety. So instead of like going down with a number of beads in the middle, you can also cut down the rows. So here's 11 rows, same idea, extender beads, Everything else is the same, but instead, again, I just cut down. Now, this one's this one I must have meant to go on the stem. That's way too small. Okay, so keep that in mind. You have flexibility, and keep in mind the sort of center, like the good, like medium size ones you want to have are the 18 bead center ones, and then like a 24 bead. That's, these are the 18s, and these are the 24s. So definitely want to have some larger ones in there, too. So the 24s are good size in there. So definitely do, I would break it up if you only want to do two sizes into the 24 bead, 13 row. I know I'm repeating, but I'm trying to remind myself. And then the 18 slash 19 bead, 24, 
you know, an 18 bead, uh, 13 row also with the extenders. One or two beads each time. Up to you what you do with those. So I'm going to pause for a moment while I make one more of these. Or actually, we're going to end this one here because we're about half an hour. No, no, I think we can finish it out. Let's see. Hang on, pause. Okay, so now let's get them on to their individual stem wire. So again, I was making a little ones because I wanted to do a combo on the larger ones with one of those like darker gray khakis because I feel like it makes it look like it's sort of, you know, maybe on its way out, a little wilty. And I realized, again, I always get reminded of how different bead sizes are, basically like their height, right? The hole is the same, I guess, but the height is very different. So this one, when I did 24 beads, it was really long. So it's probably good, again, to go by and just be aware of what your bead count would be and then stick with that depending on the bead. So for the larger ones, I'm doing about a one and a quarter inch. So in terms of length, until you understand what that translates into given the specific bead you're using. So for the larger ones, I did one and a quarter inch. Again, 13 rows, blah, 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 all that. For the medium ones, I did one inch. And then I did some smaller ones, this cute little small guy. It's just, it just has a lot of curvature on it. I was having fun curving it around. And this one was three quarters inch. So if I were doing, say, just six stems, I would probably do two of each, two smalls, two mediums, two larges. If you don't want to be bothered with that, then at least break it up into the mediums and larges and do three of each of those. And you might want more stems. Now, I did my original stems on... 18 gauge because I wanted them to be thinner and really malleable um, but now I'm feeling like they're almost too malleable but you could do an 18 gauge stem wire um, I'm going to actually try this one on just a, and just do a single because again you're trying to get really get them shaped and, and they held pretty well in the arrangement you know I haven't sent it out into the world yet so that's my concern so I'm actually going to use a 16 gauge and I cut it down to 12 inches oh I guess 12 inches exactly huh didn't actually measure it. Um, I cut it down to 12 inches because I don't want to work with the big, huge one. And 12 inches is probably good for this. So um, I'm going to try it on a 16 gauge again. You can use an 18 gauge if you want to. Now, I'm going to use a darker tape on this. Not that light moss one or that, that moss colored one. I'm going to use just a simple, plain old dark green. Because the leaves are more dark green on these. So I'm using a different stem um, floral tape on it. And we're going to just use a single here. So I do a first sort of pass through just because it's hard for at least I, I don't like to wire onto bare stem wire. So I'm going to just do a little, my fingers are turning a little green from all the paddle wire. So I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up about, so I'm about halfway through. So about quarter of an inch past. And then I'm just going to do sort of a fold back down and just wrap, wrap this guy around just like the first top bit about that far. And that's just to give the wire something to hold on to. Now, again, I'm going to use, like, whatever is your favorite wrapping wire. Right now, apparently, I'm using 30-gauge zebra wire as the way to go. You're not really going to see it, so the color doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so I was going to do, let's do this guy. So, I'm again, I'm going to do trios at a time onto them, as I did before. Again, here. Notice, so what's happening is I lace the top one on there. Right, I'm gonna like kind of. I'm gonna weave it through. So I guess the the wire does matter a little bit. I forgot that I'm gonna actually weave it up through. So I'm gonna use actually a black on this because I don't want it to be seen. Right, so the black actually works well, or a dark green. Um, however you want to do it, because I'm gonna lace this one's gonna be laced underneath, so I'm gonna actually see a little bit of it there. These aren't, but this one I'm gonna the middle one is gonna be laced on top there. So um, I'll still use this green. That'll work. Now, that also means I'm going to have to cut it off of the spool. So I'm going to cut off maybe, I don't know, a foot and a half-ish. Let's see. I, I actually forgot that I do it this way, so I never really measure. So let's say a foot and a half, maybe even two feet. Chop that off of the spool. Um, and again, just choose which one, you know, how you want to. If they're all about the same size, it's fine. I'm going to put, it uh, doesn't really matter. Let's put this guy in the middle. Sure, what the heck. So I'm going to. Put this one down, and I want it to be really stable, so I'm going to take my, I'm going to put it on the underside as far up as my twists go, as my twisty part, the basic frame, and then I'm going to, you know, maybe put about three inches down under my thumb, wrap it up from the bottom, 
and then I'm going to lace it through. It doesn't really matter how. You're just basically attaching it on. So from the underside, you know, you're just kind of attaching that stem wire on here. So it's just really nice and solid. I mean, technically, you don't have to do it. It would, I guess there's, it just makes it a little more solid. I mean, if you didn't want to, you could just lace it up and wire it onto the top of the stem wire. Pull it down. And so I'm just lacing up through. It doesn't have to be every, do not make it every row, just every couple rows, you know, lace it through up to the top. You do not need to do it every row for sure. Okay, so then just pulling it down. I'm at the top now, keeping it kind of on there. And then I'm flipping it around, pulling it through. I'm just, you know, kind of weaving it on there. This is way too much wire. I should have, I'm actually fine without this much wire. Okay, now I'm pulling it through this one. My gosh, I'm having a problem seeing with these glasses. So right now I'm there, so I'm gonna go right about across from there. And now I'm going back down. Doesn't have to go all the way up to the tip. You're just getting a few, you know, just cr crisscross it a few times. Nothing fancy. Going through, now I'm going downwards. So I cut off about two feet of wire, which is way more than I need. Okay, now, again, pulling this through, looking where that is. So I'm going straight across. Now remember, you're not gonna really even, they're not gonna even really, unless someone's getting right up in the business here, they're not gonna really see this part, right? I mean, I get picky about it, but I'm just saying you don't have to worry about it too much. And once I get like there, I actually just go across and I go underneath it right there. So I'm going under. And should have done a contrast. So I just go underneath it now. I'm just wrapping it down. So again, it doesn't have to. I know it's hard to see because I did use green. Darn it. But basically, I only did like a crisscross here, a crisscross here. So I only went through like maybe two or three times going up. And then two or three times, two times going down. And then went underneath it. There's no like science to this. Just do what you do. Okay. And now I'm going <laughs> to... I kinked these up a little bit too much. I'm going to turn these to kind of turn them at like a 45 degree angle, getting our protractors out. Doesn't really matter because we're going to fix it later and go about, I don't know, you know, it doesn't, again, I'm not trying to be casual, but what, like about half an inch, do one that's a little bit less, maybe like three eighths of an inch, just so it's like right there. Lace that guy down, get that one nice and tight. Keep your wires on there. Okay, keep them flat against the stem wire. Come back up. And then this one, almost straight across, we're going to do this guy. Right there, so that they're, you can see here, this one's straight up top. This one's about half an inch, and this one's like pretty much right on top of that guy. And again, lacing right up to the bottom of the leaf. I guess two feet was actually pretty good because I want to go down now. So two feet of wire, let's stick with that. And normally I would get out my pliers. I'm being lazy here. And kind of tap these down as we go. Just get them on there. These are going to be kind of in the mix inside. So you're not going to really see. Oh, see, I just broke this wire. That's one thing that happens. I'm going to keep using it though get spoiled by that stainless steel wire. So I'm still using it, wrapping things down. Okay, so once I've got that done, I'm gonna kind of just flush out like that. I am going to use my tape, squishing it out. Now, if you want to, you can actually tape, and sometimes I do that, I tape the, the top one. I Once I just get the top one on alone, I'll just tape that down just so I don't have to go up and down again and go around things. And sometimes it's easier. Otherwise, just, you know, tape around it. Kind of just work around it. So again, if you want to, you can you can tape. Because these are going to be thin anyway, so there's no reason not to. So I'm taping around, getting down. Now I can kind of push these up a little bit. Just taping down into the mix there. Now these are straight across, so I can just basically... Just go underneath both of them. Now, I like to do one cross in between them just to kind of have 
and pull that tape down into it. Don't pull it tight so it breaks. But just so that there's no like wire showing there. I mean, if there is, no big deal. You can even come back around and do it again. All right. It also kind of fortifies, keeps it nice and level with things. Okay, and then now that whole area is done. Make sure your tape, if it gets a little bunchy there, that's fine. But now that I'm going underneath it and going out, I want to keep it flat. Keep my tape flat. Which is really hard to do this under the camera. Let's put you over there. Okay, now I'm going to push my leaves up so they're out of my way. See? Oh, that's much easier. Okay, now once it's about that far down, I just go into spin mode. And keep trying to keep it flat there. And again, if you ever, like, break your tape, just go back a few, you know, inches. Like, if you break your tape like that, purposely breaking it, and you're, oh, I'm not done yet. Then just take your tape. Start a little bit down, like go overlap there, go up a little bit from, I think this is, I can tell it's upside down. Go a little bit up from where you're at and then curve it back down. Might make a little, like little thickness there, but it's not the end of the world. So if that happens, just keep going, you know, go up and then go back down. It's a little bit of a lump there now. I purposely stretched it out. I mean, purposely broke that so that you can see that it's not the end of the world. So again, twisting it down to the bottom. This is the part that no one's going to see in theory if you're going to have it in a vase. So once you get to the bottom, and we might, we're probably going to end up cutting it even shorter. So we're not going to worry about, you know, if the bottom's gluing down or, you know, staying still. And you can always go back and kind of roll it between your fingers, get it going a little bit tighter. Be careful when you do that, though, that you're not, like, that your other hand isn't unrolling it above it. <laughs> okay, so right about there, I'm going to cut it off. Now, if I were going to keep going, I would worry more about what the bottom's going to... I mean, if I were going to keep it this length, I would worry more about what's going on at the bottom, and I'd do that sort of reverse swaddle burrito roll where I go a little bit past, like I do in the top, a little bit past, and then roll it down again. And sometimes you even might want to put a little spot of glue under there. Some some floral tapes are pretty. This one's really nice, but some are very are very dry, right? So now that covers up that bottom of that stem wire, so it's not pointy anymore. And so now we got these three. They're ready to go. Um, in general, I do like to have um, the top, the middle one, be on top. So I'll kind of like bend it up a little bit, like bend that back a little bit, and then kind of get these guys squished underneath the top one. So like kind of have kind of bend the top one up, which is a lot easier if you're doing 18 gauge and kind of shape it so that these guys, these other two go underneath it. Right. And then after that, you can shape it however the heck you want to, you know, and if they're under that's it's not a huge deal one way or the other. But, you know, then we're going to shape these and, you know, just get them shaped and do weird little things and then. You don't know also how the how you're going to want them to be in the final arrangement. You might want them to be bowed down more. You might want them to stick out more. You don't know. So right now we're just doing sort of getting ready. So you can keep them just straight. And you also can shape the actual leaves later. So these are ready to go. And again, I would make at least six individual stems. Now, if you're planning on using a small mouth vase, you might want to reduce the number of stems you have and actually, you know, wire two together. And you can do that. I, I haven't done it here because I like to have control over all of them. So you could like, you know, just wire them down here before you do the full, you could, you know, do the full um, taping. Wire them down together around here and then just tape it from there down. Um, and then you can control them individually. And while it's still two stems going through, they're, they're stuck together. So they're still taking up less space. So you, that's an option. I did not go that direction with these. So up to you if you want to lash them together. Otherwise, that's our deal. And those are our peony leaves. And the more you make, the better. I did 12 individual stems. I'm saying you should at least do six, which is 18 leaves. And break it down into the small, medium, and larges. 
And uh, that's it for our leaves. But one of the most important parts, because again, they, having that individual control, we can have it sticking out from the vase. It can have all kinds of pretty things happening. That's it for now. Holy cow, this one's long. I hope it's not going to make me cut it in half. Okay, so <laughs> I will see you next time for what are we doing next? I think we're probably going to start the buds. I think. Not 100% sure. But we'll start the buds. So off we go. So far, so good and awesome work. I've been seeing some pictures and some PMs with things, and those are pretty, looking pretty darn good. Um, lots of personality. So I'll see you guys for the buds next time.